Hey guys, it's Jermaine Morgan and you're watching Jermaine Morgan TV. In today's lesson, I want to talk about covering the fretboard. This is a term I know that's near and dear to a lot of bass players. I get a lot of uh, requests about kind of covering the fretboard and knowing the fretboard. And in other words, I want to use it for a subtopic, staying out of no man's land, <laughs> because I know a lot of people really deal with that, especially when it comes to soloing up or, or doing licks up past the 12th fret. I know that's something a lot of people have let me know that they actually deal with, and it's something that I used to deal with uh, from time to time. Okay, getting right into that, in the groove that you heard us play, it was in the key of C for one. It's a really, you know, laid back funk groove. And what I was doing in some of the areas, I was kind of stretching out over uh, the progression, and obviously I went up past the 12th fret. Now, key thing about knowing how to stretch out past the, the 12th fret is knowing where all of the notes are on the fretboard, first off. I mean, today I'm tuned with standard. Like I said, we're in the key of C. For most of you all that follow me, you know I normally tune flat, but for the sake of these lessons, and I keep getting the same question, why are you tuned flat? For the people that want to know why I tune flat, it's a gospel basis thing, man. Uh, in gospel music, uh, people like to hear that low B flat. Bass players, we like to play that low B flat. So a lot of us, not everybody, but a lot of us like tuning down to be able to capture that low B flat. I know bass players that even tune down to uh, the low A. So it's just a matter of preference. That's why I tune down. It's, it's nothing that anybody has to do. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But um, yeah, I do it for preference reasons. I like the sound of the low B flat, the low E flat, the open A flat, and so on. So but today for this lesson, I am tuned standard, so it's B, E, A, D, and G, okay? And so the biggest thing is knowing your fretboard, being able to learn the fretboard, and this is a five-string bass. Another thing I get comments about uh, is sometimes people that play four-string, if I'm playing my six-string, uh, 
they say they're confused if I'm showing you licks and that kind of thing. The thing to remember, when you're dealing with five and six string bass, it's just like a four string. The only thing is with the five string bass, you have the added B string. The top string is the added B string. Everything else, if you were to take off this B string, you would have your four string, E, A, D, and G. Now, you have the same thing with the six string. The only difference that would happen with the six string is you had the added C string that would be on the bottom. So the six string, the difference from the four string and the six string, you had added B string and an added C string that would be your six string, okay? So that's the only difference. So if you see me put up a video, if you see some of my videos and I'm covering licks and I'm doing them on a six string, more than likely, I'm gonna be playing those within a regiment that somebody on a four string can play the licks. Every now and again, I might hit a low B flat, but other than that, I'm gonna be playing in a register within these, within these four strings almost all of the time. So with that being said, knowing the fretboard, being able to recognize quickly, you know, this is C. If you're on a four string, first dot, second string, depending on how your dots are laid out, is to be the third fret. Key of C, and you know you have your octaves, and then if you have a uh, five string like I have, that's your low C. Okay, being able to go across your bass and identify all of those notes, that's your C as well. C as well here, and I'm covering this kind of fast because I figure this stuff most of you guys already know. You know this is C as well. And so once you identify, and I'm just using C for example, you guys should be well aware of every note on this fretboard. I'm not going to do it here. I do, if you guys are beginners, I cover this whole fretboard and kind of getting familiar with it in my beginner basics course on JermaineMorgan.net. I won't get into that here because obviously I know I got some people that are not beginners watching this video. So learning the fretboard, I will say rule number one and being able to stay out of no man's land because... Once you kind of know where the fretboard in, in no man's land, just for the sake of people who want, oh, what is he talking about no man's land? It's a, it's a term I've heard several people say <laughs> uh, growing up in the South, uh, when you hear somebody that's, that, that run past the 12th fret trying to do runs and licks and that kind of thing, and they get lost down there <laughs> and they try to come back and land on the wrong note. We call it no man's land because you don't know where you are down past the 12th fret. We know these double dots rep represent a repeat sign in music. So you can't see it here. It's a sword uh, on this warrior bass. But if you can see here, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's double dots here for most basses that indicates a repeat. So here is the same as open E on your bass when you're talking about the E string. It's open E. So everything past this point repeats all the way down. So the same thing you see here from, from the, uh, the nut all the way down, it repeats the same thing all the way down. So if you can be familiar with that on the bass, understanding that everything is repeating. You don't get lost when you get down here and you start playing this C versus playing this C or this C or that C and so on. You know exactly where the notes are. So when you go for a lick or something, if I was going to do um, like, for instance, this the groove that we're playing, and might I add this before I forget, this backing track will be available for download on JermaineMorgan.net. It's only like 50 cents for the backing track. And so it will be available for download on JermaineMorgan.net. And uh, I'll put that link below so that you can get that. Um, but the, quickly, we're going to run through the progression of this um, of this groove because I know people going to want to know the progression. So real quick, I'll play it and we'll run through this um, progression. I'm just going to play it a little low here. All of this is over the one. You just stay there on the one. Still over the one. And this is when it moves. Flat seven to the four. Back to one. Groove on the one. Back to flat seven to the four. Walking up to the four. Back to the one. And on the five. Turn around. That's the whole groove. So you can play this groove. I was playing the actual line, but you have the option of playing the groove just with playing, just staying on the one like I was doing. So let's see here. I'll play through a little bit of it. Flat 
seven. Walk it up to the four. Flat seven. That's, that's the whole thing. So what I was doing, the other thing that I was doing is that's the line. So we're going going into that dominant. Okay. So going into uh the line is E flat E. Going back from that C down to that uh B flat. That's the whole line. Again, slow. Whole line again. So up to speed, that line is. Coming out. And so we're leading into that four. Walking up from that E flat to that F. E flat E F one one back to flat seven, which is B flat. Then we hold on that G. You can pulse it or or hold on it. So that's the whole progression. So the thing about it, once we know what the groove is, now you have the option to flip it. I can play that line, or I can stay on the one. And so now you can take variations of of that line or, or staying on the one. Add a piece of that line in there. You see what I'm saying? So now you can take variations of it. Now the thing I want to hit on, so now once I start stretching out around that, I know I can go. Now, what did I do just then? <laughs> I went down to my octave C because I know that's my C there. I went down to my high octave. I'll slow that down. I'm really not paying much attention to the note that I'm sliding in on. It's just, a, it's just a slide. So that's not important where you land on that. And most of the time, your hand is going to kind of land right where it needs to. And I'm doing the ghost notes in between. And that's a chord as well that you could use. Over there, C. Different inversion of the dominant chord there. So we're coming out of that and going into a major pentatonic, C major pentatonic. But that's the only thing that's different. I'm 
kind of slide into it at Grayson and that's what makes it churchy or bluesy so to speak and you can do it both ways you can either slide into it this way or so that means you can slide from the D or you can slide from the E flat it's your choice but I probably most of the time would slide from the D to kind of get me a, a, a nice grace note going two three four that's the time in one two three four now the thing is how do we land back on the one and, and what we're doing in this particular line i am landing on the one of c that puts me right back on that groove but if i were to step out in another part of the song how do i know i am to not get lost and without going always you know kind of going to the one of uh, whatever the the note or the root is instead of playing the root starting in a different place than the root going to do my lick because i know that's a lot of times uh, people like to kind of start their runs on the, um just like if we're doing the four so uh i'll show you what i'm talking about let's play it in context <laughs> So now instead of starting on my flat seven, that B flat, I'm starting on now a dominant. building that line off of the dominant but I have to keep in mind when I'm playing any lick that I'm doing the biggest thing getting out of no man's land always know where you're going uh, if you're gonna do a lick make sure one you got time to finish that lick out or you gotta kind of tailor make that lick to fit that situation or whatever so you can finish it and the other thing knowing where you're going so you can land on the notes you need to land on. I know I'm going to the four, so I'm going. So I know I'm playing that flat seven and I'm walking up to that four. So whatever I do, I got to get out of that four in term. I'm, I got to get out of that flat seven in time enough to get to my four. So let me try to do it again in context and I'll lead into it this time. And I'm going to do it here. One more time. Okay, and what I did there, I led into my four as well. I went and I'm just sliding into that chord, double stop, or triple stop, however you want to call it. I'm playing the root and just the regular dominant chord. But I'm not adding that F in there until I finish the left. But it's up to you, whatever you want to do. The biggest thing, like I said, we're running out of time on this lesson. I won't be able to cover all of these things. I do get into a lot of this stuff in the monthly membership. But what I do want to say with this, make sure if I can add any any value to you at all make sure you know where you're going the biggest thing is when you're practicing this stuff and you're practicing your riffs don't just learn the line and do it all over the one like when you're practicing uh riffs and stuff i know we like to just kind of groove just say for instance in this groove we like to just groove on c and try all these licks and stuff over c but try these licks. I challenge you to try this stuff going into a different part of the song or going into the bridge or going in, find a different song to work these licks out on and try leading into something instead of just staying right there on C instead of. We're going to stay on C the whole time and I just play a whole bunch of riffs over C because most songs don't just stay on one note. They're going to move around. You're going to go in from the one to the four or from the six to the four or something like that. So try the licks that you're doing. Understand the chord. 
That's another thing I didn't say earlier. Understand the chord. Understand what's being played. If you have to ask, if you're playing in a band, ask the keyboard player what chord they're playing. The simple version. You don't need to know the little 10-finger chord or whatever. Give them the simple triad version. Ask for the simple triad. Uh, what chord are you playing? What's the basis of this chord? Is it major? Is it minor? Is it dominant? How can I, you know, ask questions. Ask people around you. Feed off the people around you. And you'll be surprised what you'll learn. The biggest thing, take your time, know where you're going, understand how the song is moving, and try practicing more than one way. Don't sit and play in bass player's favorite key, E and E flat, open strings. So try to move around, try to understand where this stuff is going. So I hope these tips have been helpful to you. I know we kind of uh, covered a lot in a few minutes, but I hope this stuff has been helpful to you. Just take time, put the time in practicing this stuff try out all these different ideas and you'll be surprised what you come up with listen i appreciate you guys watching i appreciate you guys tuning in let somebody know that we're back and be sure to catch us next week same time uh jermaine morgan tv peace we out of here